Welcome to the deep dive. Today, uh, we're going to be tackling this YouTube video. Okay. And it's called You Will Be Wealthier. And it's kind of like a documentary. Okay. But it's also got this sort of music mixtape feel to it. Mm-hmm. And the guy that uh, that it features is, uh, he's a CPA. Okay. And he's a real estate developer. And get this. Right. He went from owning one duplex to owning over 500 units. Wow. That's, uh, that's quite a journey. Going from a single duplex yeah. to 500 units. Yeah. Um, that suggests some serious real estate savvy. I'm definitely curious to hear. It's pretty amazing. What strategies are used? And the whole thing is about this idea of what they call a generational flip. Okay. So it's this idea of like you're intentionally trying to change things so that you make life better for future generations. Okay. And um, the video's creator, Seiko Varner, really focuses on sharing knowledge. Mm-hmm that's going to have like a lasting impact. That's a powerful idea. Yeah. It suggests a shift from a solely individualistic approach to wealth building, to one that considers the long-term well-being of your family and even community. Exactly. It'll be interesting to see how this concept plays out in the specific steps they outline. Exactly. So this uh, this guy, Adon Hugh Baker, he's the real estate mogul. Okay. He shares his six steps to achieving this generational wealth. Right. And he breaks it down in a way that seems pretty doable. Okay. Even if you're not starting out with like a ton of money. Okay. I'm all ears. Let's unpack these six steps. All right. So step one is about becoming what he calls a thousandaire. A thousandaire. Yeah. Okay. And this isn't about like hitting a million bucks right away. Okay. He defines a thousandaire as someone who can create a business that brings in at least a hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay. Basically, you're not living paycheck to paycheck anymore. That makes sense. Yeah. It's about establishing a solid financial foundation first before aiming for those larger sums. Right. But how does one become this thousandaire? Well, he suggests wholesaling real estate as one path. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with wholesaling, it's basically a strategy where you find a great deal on a property, Mm -hmm. you put it under contract, and then you sell that contract to another buyer. Okay. So think of it like you're kind of like a middleman in a real estate deal. Right. You're not actually buying it or fixing it up or anything. Life's just... You're just connecting the dots. Ah, that clarifies things. Yeah. So it's about leveraging your knowledge and connections in the real estate market to generate income. Right. It sounds like a strategy that requires a good understanding of real estate, mm-hmm. but doesn't necessarily demand a huge upfront investment. Exactly. It's all about being resourceful and finding those opportunities. Right. Now, step two is where things get intriguing. Okay. It's called living the rent-free lifestyle. Rent-free lifestyle. Imagine having all of your living expenses covered by rental income. It definitely does. Yeah. But how does one achieve this rent-free lifestyle? Hmm. Is it just about owning rental properties? Well, he talks about his own experience. So he bought a duplex okay. and he lived in one unit and rented out the other one, right. which basically allowed him to live mortgage free. That's a smart strategy. Using rental income to offset your living costs can free up a lot of cash flow. For sure. For other investments or savings. Yeah. I can see how this would be a game changer for building wealth. Yeah. But I do wonder, is this realistically achievable for everyone or does it depend on factors like location and the cost of housing? That's a really good point. Yeah. It's definitely not like a one size fits all solution. Right. You know, factors like location and property prices and rental demand can definitely like really influence whether or not this is even feasible. Right. But he emphasizes that even just taking the step puts you ahead of 70 percent of Americans. Wow. Financial. That's a pretty compelling statistic. Yeah. It really highlights the potential of real estate, even on a smaller scale, to make a significant impact on your financial well-being. Absolutely. Now, step three focuses on separating your personal and business credit. This is crucial, right? I mean, I know for any entrepreneur, keeping your personal finances separate from your business is a must. Yes. It protects you Uh and helps you leverage opportunities. Absolutely. He recommends shooting for a 720 personal credit score to be in good standing. Okay. But then the focus shifts to building up your business credit and essentially... Living through your business. Living through your business, that's a new one for me. Yeah. What exactly does that mean? Does it mean using your business to cover everyday expenses? Yeah. I can see potential ethical considerations with that. Right. It might sound a little strange at first, but what he means is structuring your finances so that a lot of your expenses are actually run through your business. Okay. Um, Think of it as maximizing those business write-offs you might have heard about. Ah, okay. 
Yeah. So by strategically aligning your personal and business expenses, mm -hmm. you can legitimately reduce your tax burden and free up even more money for investment. It's all about working smarter, not harder. Now buckle up for step four, oh, yeah. because this one might raise some eyebrows, his uh -huh. advice. Get a million dollars in debt. Wait, hold on. Didn't we just talk about being financially responsible? I know, right? Now we're talking about taking on a mountain of debt. That seems a little contradictory, doesn't it? I know it sounds crazy. Yeah. But don't worry, he's not talking about like racking up credit card bills oh, right. or going on shopping sprees. Okay. He's advocating for what's often called good debt. Okay, so enlighten me. Yeah. What is this good debt he's referring to? So think of it this way. Instead of being afraid of debt, you're using it strategically to acquire income generating assets. Okay. So imagine using borrowed money to buy a property that generates rental income. Right. So essentially the asset is paying for itself. I see. And then eventually you're left with this valuable piece of property and potentially profit on top of that. So it's not about accumulating debt for the sake of it. It's yeah. about strategically leveraging debt to acquire assets that will build wealth over time. Yes. It's a bit like taking out a loan to start a business, hoping that the business will eventually generate enough revenue to pay off the loan and then some. Exactly. It's about using those financial tools to your advantage. Right. And this leads us to step five, where all that debt from step four starts to work its magic. Okay. You become a millionaire, at least on paper. Okay, now that's a big leap. Yeah. How does that transition happen? Does it mean the debt magically disappears? Not quite. Remember that good debt we talked about? Yes. As you make payments on that debt mm. and the value of your income producing assets grows, you build equity. Right. So essentially you own a valuable asset like a business or wow. real estate or a combination of both. Yeah. That's worth more than what you owe. Okay. So you've technically gone from thousandaire yeah. to millionaire all through strategic leveraging right. and smart asset acquisition. This is where the concept of long-term investment really comes into play. It's not about getting rich quickly, but making calculated financial decisions that compound over time, turning debt into assets. Exactly. It's a bit like planting a seed and patiently watching it grow into a mighty tree. And finally, step six is about establishing structures for wealth transfer. Cool. This is all about ensuring that the wealth you've built continues to benefit your family for generations to come. Ah, legacy building. So it's not just about building wealth. It's about ensuring that wealth continues to work for your family even after you're gone. Right. This is where estate planning, trusts, and other generational wealth transfer strategies come into play. Yes. It's about thinking beyond your own lifespan mm -hmm. and ensuring your family's financial security for the long haul. Absolutely. He actually shares an example from his own family. Okay. So the oldest member of his family has a $2 million life insurance policy. Wow. When they pass away, that money is used to cover the premiums for the next generation. Oh, wow. Life insurance policies. So it creates this cycle of financial security that spans generations. That's an interesting approach. It's like building a financial safety net for your descendants. Yeah. Ensuring they have resources to navigate life's challenges and continue building on the foundation you've established. Exactly. So those are the six steps. Okay. But there's more. Oh. The video goes on to feature these insights from a whole bunch of other entrepreneurs and thought leaders oh, cool. who offer different perspectives on wealth building. Okay. Do you want to hear about those? Absolutely. It's one thing to have a roadmap but understanding the mindset and strategies of those who already achieve success right. can be incredibly valuable. Yeah. So let's dive into their stories. All right. So we've got this roadmap with Baker's six steps, but I'm really curious to hear what these other entrepreneurs have to say about the mindset and strategies for wealth building. What kind of insights do they offer? Well, you'll find their perspectives are really diverse, which is interesting in itself. Okay. Like, for example, there's this woman, T. Renee Smith. Oh, she's like this prominent thought leader mm -hmm. and she's all about the power of shifting your mindset and mm -hmm. raising your standards. OK, so she believes that how you see yourself mm -hmm. and what you expect of yourself plays a huge role in what you can achieve. Right. Especially financially. I think a lot of people underestimate the impact of mindset. Yeah. If you don't believe you can achieve something, you're probably right. Right. But how do you go about actually shifting your mindset, especially when it comes to money. Right. That can be a deeply in, ingrained 
set of beliefs. That's the million dollar question, right? Yeah. It's definitely not easy, but I think what she's getting at is this idea that you have to actively challenge those limiting beliefs. Okay. So for example, if you're constantly telling yourself you'll never be able to afford a certain lifestyle, right. they're kind of creating a self-fulfilling prophecy. Right. It's like setting a low bar for yourself. Right. If you raise that bar, if you start envisioning yourself achieving financial success, it can actually change your behavior and open up new opportunities. And speaking of shifting perspectives, yes. there's this guy, Brother Crumb, okay. from Crumb TV, mm. and he's got this really interesting take on the whole idea of being broke. Okay. He says it's not a financial state. Interesting. It's a mindset. Now, that's a bold statement. Yeah. How does he define that broke mindset? Well, he believes that money is just a tool. Okay. And that if you're constantly focusing on the lack of it, mm -hmm. you're creating this limiting belief I see. that prevents you from seeing the resources and opportunities that are actually available to you. So it's about reframing your relationship with money. Yeah. Instead yeah. of seeing it as something you lack, uh -huh. see it as the tool you can use to build the life you want. Exactly. He even encourages people to use the term insolvent instead of broke. Interesting. It's a subtle shift in language, but it can make a difference in how mm -hmm. you approach your finances. It's about reclaiming your power, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of feeling like a victim of your circumstances, you're taking ownership of your financial situation and looking for solutions. Now, if we're talking about aiming high. Yeah. We have to mention Angel Rich. Okay. She's an entrepreneur who initially set her sights on becoming a millionaire, mm. but then something incredible happened. Did she hit her goal and then some? Well, she got some pretty game-changing advice uh -oh. from a very unexpected source. All right. One of the owners of Cisco. Wow, okay. He told her to stop thinking small. Okay. And to aim for billions, not millions. Wow, talk about raising the bar. But why billions. What was his reasoning for encouraging such a dramatic increase in her goals? His point was that it takes the same amount of work and dedication to build a billion dollar business right. as it does a million dollar one. Interesting. So he challenged her to think bigger and really maximize her potential impact. That's a powerful message. It really challenges us to think about the limits we place on ourselves. Maybe we're all capable of achieving far more than we think we are if we're willing to step outside our comfort zones and dream bigger. And it connects back to what Tierney was saying about raising your standards. Absolutely. It's right? about breaking free from those self-imposed limitations and embracing a bolder vision for yourself. Now, on the topic of seeking guidance and learning from others, yeah. we have entrepreneur Carrie LX. Okay. She's a big advocate for finding mentors and financial advisors. Okay. Even if you feel like you're not making enough money yet. That's such a great point. A lot of people think that financial advice is only for the wealthy. Right. But it's actually most beneficial when you're starting out. Yes. It's like learning good financial habits from the get-go. Right. She actually shares her own experience okay. of going through some financial setbacks mm -hmm. because of just poor money management early on okay. and finding a mentor yeah. who could guide her towards better financial decisions was a game changer for her. It's a reminder that we don't have to figure everything out on our own. Yeah. There are people out there who have already walked the path we're on. Right. And their experience and insights can be invaluable. It's like having a financial roadmap and a guide all in one. Yeah. Now, the video takes a little bit of a turn with yeah. Gary McCollum. Okay. He offers this really poignant perspective on yeah. the wealth gap yeah, yeah. and the historical context that's led to the financial disparities mm. that we see today. Yeah. This is where we start to see how individual financial journeys are intertwined with larger societal structures. Right. Yeah. He talks about the history of redlining. Okay. Which was this discriminatory practice that denied black communities right. access to government-backed loans for homeownership. That's a crucial point. Building generational wealth isn't just about individual effort. Oh, yeah. We have to acknowledge and address the systemic barriers that have prevented certain groups from accessing the same opportunities. Yeah. It's about understanding that the playing field isn't always level, and it's essential to work towards creating a more equitable society where everyone has a fair chance to build a better future. Absolutely. And then to kind of round out these personal stories, we have Wesley Hawkins, yeah. who shares this incredibly inspiring story of overcoming adversity. Okay. His story is a testament to the power of resilience and determination. Wow. He faced poverty, right. homelessness, wow. even involvement in the criminal justice system. Wow. 
but he ultimately turned his life around in a really remarkable way. It sounds like he had the odds stacked against him, but he found a way to break free from those limiting circumstances and create a better life for himself. He graduated from college three times. Wow. And he became a homeowner. That's amazing. Proving that transformation is possible, even in the face of like significant challenges. Wow. He really emphasizes the importance of hard work, mm -hmm. believing in yourself, right. and seeking support from mentors and educators. His story brings a human element to the discussion of wealth building. Yeah. It's a reminder that it's not just about financial strategies. Uh -huh. It's about personal growth, resilience, and the power of community support. So we've gone through these six steps. Yeah. And we've heard from some incredible individuals about their own experiences and insights. Yes. What stands out to you the most from all of this? For me, it's the recurring theme of mindset. Mm -hmm. We've heard it from multiple individuals. T. Renee Smith talking about raising your standards. Mm -hmm. Brother Crumb challenging the idea of being broke. Yeah. Angel Rich being encouraged to aim for billions. Right. It all comes down to believing in your ability to achieve financial success mm -hmm. and having the courage to dream big. Yeah. It really is all about mindset. If you don't believe it, you're probably not going to achieve it. Absolutely. It's about recognizing that your thoughts and beliefs have a powerful impact on your actions mm -hmm. and ultimately your results. Mm -hmm. And we also saw how important action is. It's not enough to just listen to advice right. or gather information. You have to actually put that knowledge into practice yeah. and take those concrete steps towards building a more secure financial future. Right. Whether it's creating a budget or starting a side hustle mm. or maybe diving into the world of real estate yeah. or seeking guidance from a financial advisor. Yeah. It's all about taking that first step and building that momentum. And remember, building generational wealth is a journey, not a sprint. Right. It's about making consistent progress, mm -hmm. learning from your experiences, yeah. and celebrating every milestone along the way. It's about creating a legacy of financial stability and opportunity for yourself and the people who come after you. So as we wrap up this deep dive into You Will Be Wealthier, yeah. what's one key action you would recommend our listeners take away from this episode? You know, I think a great starting point would be to just reflect on your own beliefs and attitudes towards money. Okay. Are there any limiting beliefs or negative self-talk that might be holding you back? That's such a valuable exercise. It's about becoming aware of those subconscious patterns right. that might be sabotaging your efforts to build wealth. Exactly. Once you identify them, you can start to challenge and reframe them. It's like shining a light on those hidden obstacles and then figuring out how to overcome them. And I would add that finding a source of support and accountability can be incredibly helpful. Yeah. Whether it's a mentor, a financial advisor, or even a supportive friend or family member. Mm -hmm. Having someone to share your goals with and who can provide guidance along the way can make a huge difference. It's like having a cheerleader in your corner. Someone who believes in you and pushes you to reach your full potential. So to wrap things up, mm -hmm. what are your final thoughts on this deep dive into you'll be wealthier? Well, I think it's a fantastic resource for anyone who wants to build a more secure financial future for themselves and their families. Yeah. It offers this great combination of concrete steps, inspiring stories, and practical advice that can be applied to real life situations. I completely agree. It's a reminder that building wealth is a journey that requires effort, knowledge, mm. and a willingness to step outside of your comfort zone. But more importantly, yeah. it's a message of empowerment encouraging everyone to take control of their financial destinies. It's about realizing that you have the power to create a legacy of wealth and opportunity that will last for generations to come. Absolutely. So that's it for this deep dive into You Will Be Wealthier. Mm -hmm. We hope you found it insightful and empowering. Until next time, keep learning, keep growing, and keep striving for financial freedom.